Good morning, Mary News Media TV family. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning, and I'm wishing for everyone a wonderful and a productive day. And in the news this morning for February 16, 2024, skeletal remains are suspected to be missing dancehall artist and medic found in Keene Field. The police are reporting that the skeletal remains of a body suspected to be that of missing dancehall artist and medic whose real name is Stephanie Williams, was found in a kinfield in Wallen, St. Catherine, on Wednesday. They say the body will be processed and compared with DNA samples to determine the true identity. Williams went missing on or about Thursday, August 24, 2023, and has not been seen since. A missing person report was made to the Constant Spring Police by her mother. As a result of the report, the police commenced a missing person and a possible murder investigation. The police say several lines of inquiry were made, several persons interviewed, and the statements were recorded. Further, they stated that several case conferences were held and the significant support was given by the Criminal Investigation Branch headquarters in Kingston. The police are appealing to anyone who may have information that they believe can assist the investigation to come forward. Farmer found dead at home in Clarendon. A man who went to a farmer's yard to pick fruits ended up finding his dead body in Clarendon on Thursday. The deceased farmer has been identified as 41-year-old Eric Campbell, a resident of James Hill in Frankfield. Reports reaching the news indicated that around 11 a.m., a resident of the community went to Campbell's home to pick fruits and smelled a full scent coming from inside the house. The man alerted other residents of the community. Checks were later made by the residents who discovered the now deceased body and summoned the police. On arrival, police saw Campbell lying on the floor of his three-bedroom concrete structure in a partial state of decomposition. The scene was processed and the body taken to the Mapen Hospital, where he was confirmed dead. It was later transported to the morgue pending a post-mortem examination. A little British couple robbed at a resort in St. Anne. The Autorius police are investigating the robbery of two elderly British nationals at a Jamaica Inn resort in Autorius, St. Anne on Wednesday morning. The victims, 89 and 81 year old retirees from London, England, were robbed of cash and other valuables. It is reported that about 4 30, a man armed with a knife entered the couple's room through an open balcony door. The man stole two iPhone 13 Pro cell phones, one iPad tablet, a pair of gold earrings, and a £200 in cash. The robber then fled the scene. The Autorius police were notified by the hotel's management. Closed circuit television camera footage was viewed, and a man was seen climbing over the perimeter wall and gaining entry to the property. Mother and the son left homeless after fire raises Trelawney House. A mother and her 18-year-old son are now homeless after a fire of unknown origin raised the one apartment building in which they occupied in Hague Settlement at Trelawney early Thursday morning. Reports are that residents were alerted that the house was on fire in the community. They tried to assist to put out the blaze but were unsuccessful as it quickly engulfed the building. Checks by the news revealed that the fire brigade in Falmouth received a call about a fire in Hague Settlement about 1 p.m. Upon the arrival of the firefighters, the house was destroyed. They carried out a cooling-down operation on the smoldering rubble. Damage was estimated at about $800,000. The case against the former counselor for the Montego Bay West Division, David Brown, who reportedly assaulted his ex-girlfriend during a confrontation in May last year, has been put off until March 8. Brown, who is charged with assault occasioning bodily harm and malicious destruction of property, got the new court date and had his bill extended when he appeared in the St. James Parish Court on Thursday. Brown and the complainant had attended restorative justice sessions but there was no resolution or agreement between the parties. During the brief court hearing before presiding Judge Sasha Marie Smith Ashley, Brown's lawyer Albert Morgan presented a witness statement and requested that the Crown contact the investigating officer to verify it. Morgan also proposed that the case be removed from the criminal list 
and that the parties seek remedy in the civil court if they so desire. The matter was subsequently set for mention on March 8, when the court will decide on the next steps to take. The allegations against the Brown are that on May 28, 2023, the complainant, with whom he was in a relationship, was sitting in her car when Brown knocked on the vehicle's window. The two got into a dispute, during which Brown hit the complainant in her face, causing pain and the swelling, and also damaged her car window. Brown was subsequently suspended from the Jamaica Labour Party following his arrest and the charge. The embattled councillor had previously faced a legal trouble in 2018 in relation to an outstanding warrant from the St. James Family Court concerning a matter with the mother of his child, as well as for reportedly verbally abusing a woman on social media in March 2018. Brown faced more legal issues after allegedly hitting a 65-year-old man with his licensed firearm on August 3 that year. Brown spent five days in police custody before eventually being released. In 2019, the assault case against Brown was dismissed after the complainant declared that he no longer wanted to pursue it. Hospital Porter Freed of Gun Charges A man who was charged with illegal possession of firearm and ammunition was freed on Thursday after the sole eyewitness admitted on the cross-examination that he was a habitual liar and that he was telling lies on the accused. Freed was a 32-year-old hospital porter, Damien Anderson of Bull Bay, St. Andrew. The witness was being cross-examined by attorney at law, Abel Don Foote, when he agreed that he was a habitual liar who lied for no reason. He admitted to telling a lie when he said Anderson was one of three men who had a firearm on the day of the incident because he was unable to identify the men on the early morning of the incident. Following the admissions on the cross-examination and the submissions by foot that the evidence was unreliable, the prosecution offered no further evidence in the case. Justice Vaughn Smith returned a formal verdict of not guilty, thereby freeing Anderson. The allegations were that on October 29, 2020, Anderson was one of three men who fired shots and burned down a two-story house in Bull Bay. The witness testified in the gun court that he was upstairs at the house when he saw the three men firing shots into the yard. He said he could recognize the men due to the fact that nothing was blocking his view. Under cross-examination by foot, the witness said he knew that a line under oath was a criminal offense. He admitted that his evidence in court was a lie based on his statement to the police. When the witness was shown a photograph from the scene of crime, he agreed that a tree was partially blocking his view and he was not sure who were the three men firing shots. He said he was traumatized by the incident, which happened shortly after 5 a.m., which was before daylight. He said further that the men were dressed in black pullover hoodies, which partially blocked their faces. Foto submitted after cross-examination that the evidence was unreliable and riddled with lies, therefore Anderson should be freed. DPP satisfied with a government defense in Vibes Cartel UK appeal. Director of Public Prosecutions Paula Llewellyn says she is satisfied that the government put up a solid defense in the Vibes Cartel appeal and is hopeful of a positive ruling. The Judicial Committee of the UK based the Privy Council has reserved the judgment in the murder appeal of Dan Sol Entertainer, Adija Vibes Cartel Palmer following a two-day hearing, which concluded Thursday. Cartel and the three others were convicted on March 13, 2014, for the murder of Clive Lizard Williams. The other convicts are Sean, Sean Storm Campbell, Kahira Jones, and Andre Madsus St. John. DPP Llewellyn on Thursday said she was quite pleased with the arguments proffered by British King's Counsel Peter Knox, who represented the Jamaican government in the cartel appeal. We are quite pleased with the arguments that were proffered by Mr. Knox. We worked together from when we were in Jamaica, lots of communication between our offices, but we thought that he represented the respondents quite well. I let him speak. How did it go today, Peter? Oh, we shall see. That is it. It's a matter for their lordships. Absolutely. I have nothing else I can say. <laughs> that is it. <laughs>
But Isaac Buchanan, the attorney for Vibes Cartel, is confident that the law lords will overturn the conviction and uphold the rules of the Constitution. I think that the most important thing is that um, in keeping with what Justice Sykes said in, in the NITS decision, the Julian Robinson decision, is that our Constitution is for us. And the importance of the Constitution, due process, fair trial right, just is so sacred um, that a breach of it has to mean something. If it, if, it is, if it just turns out to be words on a paper, it would be a travesty of justice.